Well, that was pointless. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 video game plot lines that went nowhere. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we'll be looking at both major and minor plots in video games that didn't end up amounting to very much overall. As you might expect, this list is packed to the brim with spoilers, so a spoiler alert is now in effect. <laughs> Number 10, The Sires, Gears of War 2. We don't know what's in there. It could be something contaminated or worse. Lambid humans would eventually go on to spawn the Locust? Sounds like a terrifying enemy that would give Marcus Phoenix and company a run for their money. And they did, briefly. While originally confined to the New Hope Research Facility and kept in stasis, the Sires were released due to the arrival of Delta-1. And boy, were they cranky. However, aside from a tense one-off exchange with Marcus and Dominic, the Sires are pushed aside in favor of a new lambent threat, wasting whatever potential those Locust forefathers may have had. Number 9. Hastrum's Dying Sun, Mass Effect 2. Any news yet on the data you sent? I'm not likely to hear anything for a while, or on an unsecured channel for that matter. With so many characters and choices carried over from one entry in the series to the other, we were all pretty convinced that this particular subplot was going to come to fruition with explosive results. Oh, how wrong we were. We didn't really have time to chat while taking out Gath on Hastrum, did we? On a mission to recruit longtime crew member slash possible love interest Tally Zora, she reveals to Shepard that she was sent to investigate the sun surrounding the planet, as it's aging at an accelerated rate, something that has her deeply worried and mystified. Immediately, you'd probably think that this has something to do with the Reapers. Well, we'll never know, because it was never mentioned again. Come on, Tally, you're a smart girl. A son dying too soon isn't something you'd just forget. For now, I should get back to work. Thanks for coming by. Number 8. Don't Trust Drake. Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception. Don't trust Drake. How's Charlie? <sighs> Who knows? The clue is kind of in the name, except this particular deception falls flat way too quickly. After being hit with a hallucinogenic drug, Nate's ally Cutter starts to trip all kinds of balls, especially when this particular drug leaves him very open to suggestion. Your face is peeling off. <sighs> well, whatever it was, he's tripping balls. When informed not to trust Drake, it leads to a scuffle between them, even concluding with Sully ready to kill Cutter, if need be. So you might happen to think that after all that, the group is now fractured with seeds of doubt planted everywhere. Nope. All cleared up, time to move on. Wait, seriously? Not even a little bit of collateral damage? Right. Next thing I know, you'll be putting that gun to the back of my head telling me about the rabbits. <laughs> hey, play nice, boys. Number seven, Harley Quinn's pregnancy test. Batman, Arkham City. As the world's greatest detective, you're bound to find yourself uncovering various clues while pursuing criminal scum. One of them had fans doing backflips when Harley Quinn's positive pregnancy test was discovered. Given the fact that the clown prince of crime had just bitten the dust, the fact that a Joker Jr. could soon be running around was both scary yet intriguing. What have you done? Now you know how it feels! Turns out that this was just a pipe dream, as in the Harley Quinn's Revenge DLC, we see countless other pregnancy tests that appear negative, meaning she hasn't got a psychotic bun in the oven after all. Did Rocksteady Studios get cold feet, or did Warner Brothers not want Harley to be portrayed as a mother? We may never know. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. Mama's gonna kill for you the whole damn world. Number 6, The Deleter, Metroid Other M. Wait. Here. Espionage and conspiracy will always come second when compared to the alien blasting antics of Samus. But if you're gonna go out of your way to create a character who betrays the rest of his team and sabotages Samus's efforts, at least see it through to the end. Don't just drop it and leave us with no clear-cut ending, come on. Considering the mortal danger we'd survive together, I had to agree with her. There was a traitor among us. Most fans speculate that the identity of this masked assassin is James Pierce, while others say that it was KG since he's reported MIA at the end of the game. It could have even been Anthony since he's the only member of the 7th platoon confirmed to be alive. Anyway, all these theories are just proof as to why you never leave a whodunit mystery left unsolved. Number 5, The Present Day, Assassin's Creed series. Isabel Ardant has a meeting here in a few hours. Uh, doesn't say with who. Look, Desmond, it's not you, it's us. While you do have your occasional badass moments, we were all here to jump into the shoes of master assassins throughout history, basically anyone who isn't you. 
Unfortunately, the present day plotline just isn't as investing as those found in the Animus. And with Desmond biting the dust in Assassin's Creed 3, the modern day stories are now just non-interactive and completely forgettable, because aside from the odd Juno appearance, nothing interesting ever happens. Signal is still too weak and I am spread thin. It feels like they're just dragging their feet with this plotline until they get to the next game. In fact, we're pretty sure that Ubisoft doesn't even know what to do with the modern day storyline anymore either. And, well, what now? Number four, what happens next, Mr. Freeman? Half-Life 2, Episode 2. Dad, oh my god. Gamers have been complaining to Valve for years about finishing the action-packed saga of Mr. Gordon Freeman. But until that glorious day comes, we're left with the mother of all cliffhangers that still rattles us to this day. Don't leave me. There are so many questions that we don't know even where to begin. Will we ever see more of the Black Mesa facility? How about Alex Vance's childhood growing up amidst a rebellion? Any more info on the Combine? G-Man's Endgame? All of these questions, as well as Freeman's ultimate fate, are simply left up to the imagination as we wait for the elusive third entry in the series. It will be a sad day should all of Half-Life's plotline end up going nowhere, but then again, that day may never come. Wake up, Mr. Freeman. Wake up and... Smell the ashes. Number three, the Scrin, Command and Conquer Tiberium series. Course change completed and on planetary approach. Startup sequence proceeding normally. The third game in the Tiberium series focused on how an extraterrestrial element became the fuel that launched a war between the GDI and Brotherhood of Nod. As it turns out, the Tiberium was created by an alien race called the Scrim, who planned to use it to harvest the Earth. How did they fare? Well, you can briefly play as them in a bonus campaign before they get totally owned by Kane. GDI has always viewed the Tacitus as a warning about the visitors. I saw it as an opportunity. At the end of their campaign, the Scrin Overlord orders the preparations of a full invasion force to Earth to return for the sequel. So, how did that go? Well, no idea, because they never show up again, despite their remaining tower being a key plot point for the game. Earth will fall. Number two, blackouts, heavy rain. I have the results of your MRI scans. Everything seems to be normal. There is no physical damage from the accident. Hey David Cage, you really have to stop sacrificing common sense and consistency for the sake of good plot twists. All throughout this thrilling mystery, Ethan Mars has to go through some pretty hellish trials in order to save his son. <laughs> Originally, he was convinced that he was the origami killer due to his constant and long-lasting blackouts, and that during these lapses in unconsciousness, he became a completely different person. That sounds like it would be a cool revelation. Well, after we discovered that Shelby was behind it all, the blackouts are really never referenced again. Red herrings are one thing, but come on guys, do you think we wouldn't notice this one? <laughs> Number one. Eli steals Sehelanthropus, Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain. Goodbye, father. I don't need you anymore. Damn it, Konami. We know you had something to do with this, don't lie. While we relish the chance to play as Big Boss and see younger versions of such iconic characters like Liquid Snake and Psycho Mantis, the fact that their plots were clearly cut leaves a lot to be desired. You're one hell of a soldier. I will kill you! After going all Grand Theft Auto and managing to snag Metal Gear Sahelanthropus, this orphan of war just kinda leaves. For those of you that are interested or were fortunate enough to buy the collector's edition, you can find all the raw details that would have gone into Mission 51 and complete Eli's story. As for the rest of the gaming public, we're all left with nothing. And once again, damn you, Konami. Not yet. It's not over yet. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.